and welcome to the End in Mind podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin, the owner of Meraki Media Management. The End in Mind is a place where we come to share stories, tips, and strategies of many entrepreneurs, creatives, business owners, and just some people that aren't willing to live the traditional lifestyle. We talk about how to live outside of the box today and how to incorporate what really is important in your life to keep that end goal always in mind. Again, if you would like to reach out to me in any type of way, you can find me on Instagram at Meraki underscore media underscore management. And I hope to hear from you all soon. Thanks so much and enjoy our show. Welcome back to the End of Mind podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin, and I have a lovely guest with me here today. Thank you so much for being here, Gata. You're welcome. Thank you. We're going to have so much fun. So can you tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Uh, that's such a weird question to ask. It's almost like <laughs> it's better when other people talk about you. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, what long story short about me is I've been in the business for 20 years. Yeah. Beauty found me. I never ever thought I would be in this position of being in the beauty business. Um, I was actually in love with music, yes. and in high school, I actually ended up buying turntables. Oh my gosh, fine. And I was like, oh, I love music. Uh, I moved here when I was 14, and I had no friends, and I learned to become my own friend. Yes. And music was very therapeutic. Nice. And when you think music, you're like, oh, what kind of music is she talking about? Well, hip hop. Like, I remember the first song that I heard was, you're familiar, well, you're younger. How old are you? 26. Okay. Well, I'm going to be 42 <laughs> soon. So Onyx um, yeah. came out with a song, and I think it really represented my rage as a kid of mm. moving here and not having any friends, I was yeah. being bullied and that song came out and then Radiohead Creep came out Yeah, and it was really like my anthem, like my my spirit songs. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I found it therapeutic. Yeah. Uh, I didn't rage on anybody of course, but <laughs> I felt like I oh, kind of like music. So I came from the Middle East. For some reason, I didn't connect with Arabic music at all. I really? swear I was born like, in my past life, I was probably like Latina or yeah. South African. <laughs> so yeah, so I got turntables, I bought records, and I was just playing around. And I started DJing. Yeah. And I forget what it was. I was outside the college one time. I was just playing around my turntables. I set it up. And then I started getting gigs. So cool. I ended up like DJing in college. Yeah. And just so you know, like, uh, I was like an ugly duckling. I had no friends. I had social anxiety. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell am I doing right now? But whatever, jump in here. They want you DJing. <laughs> so I ended up leaving college, going to New York City, working for a record label. But during high school, I worked at a hair salon. Oh, nice. Um, so that was kind of like where beauty found me. Yeah. Um, so I'll tell you, one of my best friends in high school, I met her through a drugstore I worked at. <laughs> and she called me and she got the job at the hair salon. And she's like, hey, they're looking for a receptionist. You should come. And I was like, my own. I was like, who's going to hire me at a salon? I'm like, look at me. Like, I knew where I stood, right? So they freaking took me in. Her sister waxed my eyebrows. It was my first life plucking and waxing. <laughs> they colored my hair. And that was like the first time I felt kind of cute. Yes, I love that. And I remember thinking like, damn, like everybody should feel kind of cute. Yeah. And that was like, but I didn't feel pretty yet. Okay. I just felt like there was hope for me. Which is like, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to have, right? Yeah. But, um, so I had three brothers, and I just kind of put it aside. I was like, whatever. Looks is not my department. Sure, yeah. I'm just going to work. I was a really hard worker. I always had two jobs. 
Um, then after I was done with that, I went, you know, I went to college, I went to New York City, worked for a record label, and I was interning, so I wasn't getting paid. Okay, yeah. So I was like, shit, how do I get around this? This is in New York yeah, City, it's New expensive. York. I didn't want to tell my parents I didn't have money. Right. So I was like, I got it, I got it, I saved money. I did it, I was freaking broke. So I ended up getting a waitressing job, which I lied to get. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you how I lied to get in there. And then I walked by a spa and they had a little hit we're hiring. So I walked in and, you know, they were all Asian. So I was like, oh, this is an Asian spa. There's, they're not hiring me. I was like, no, 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 we need you. And I was like, oh, you do. <laughs> I was like, all right. So I ended up working there at the record label. So I had a roommate, uh, my friend Allison, and she was from Lancaster too, and we ended up going to New York together. She worked at VH1, I worked for Little Kim's record label. Yeah, that's awesome. That's who I worked for. Allison is like gorgeous, tall, blonde dancer. So me and Allison went and tried to get waitressing jobs everywhere. Everyone wanted Allison. <laughs> Allison, you got the job. Allison, you got the job. So this is the time when we had house phones. Oh, yeah. So people would call the phone and leave a message. So they called it and they're like, I'm just here at Allison, this is blah, 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 you got the job, I don't know, whatever. Oh. So Allison ended up getting a job at this spot. So I was like, all right, well, she got a job, my turn. Like, yeah. So that's where I heard the phone, I heard the message, I was like, hey, Allison, this is Luigi, we want to hire you. I was like, fuck it, I'm Allison. <laughs> Dude, wow, I yeah. Had, I was like, I have to make some money. Like, no one wants to hire me. Yeah. Like, whatever. So I show up, Luigi, the guy that was going to hire Allison, wasn't there. Like, I'm telling you, like, the stars were in my favor <laughs> that day. <laughs> so this guy, like, totally looks at me and he's like, He hired that one? Like, I was like, Yep, he hired me. And I didn't say my name. It was like a bunch of people. Like, I'm working in New York. This is like the hottest Polish girls. Right. Models. Everybody that's yeah. in New York is like, yeah. And then you got me. And then I was like, whatever, dude. I was like, we're getting in here. So I get, I train, I do really well. And then Luigi walks in at the end of the day. Like, it's probably like three, four hours of training. And he walks in, he's like, where's Allison? Oh my gosh. And, and the guy's like, it's Allison. And he's like, that's not Allison. Where's Allison? I was like, Luigi, I was like, I'll hook you up with Allison. I know you like her. Like, just please, I just love to work here. And he's like, all right, fine. <laughs> you look pissed. Like, but you did it. You persevered. Uh, you know, like, despite yeah. all the no's, and even though you have to, like, go in the way that you did, I think awesome. that that perfectly describes, it, like, your drive, you know, and who you are as a businesswoman and how far you've come. You know, right? Like, yes, these are the things that happen in my life. So I was like, you know, your back's against the wall. Like, what yeah. do you do? Like, um, so, yeah, so I worked there. I worked at the spa and then I worked at the record label. So wow. for, for two years, I I swear to you, I probably slept two to three hours a night. Oh my gosh, God, like, that's crazy. It was like, I don't know how I did it. Like, I was down there. Yeah. Like, I'd be in the hospital. Well, I ended up in the hospital too at the end. <laughs> did you, I was like, burned out. Shoot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would go to the spa. Then I would go to Zanzibar. That's where I worked. Okay. At night. And it was a fancy, fancy lounge restaurant. Celebrities would go there. I'm like, God, every time I go there too. Did I even drink? Like, yeah, I, like, I, remember I don't know that you say that. over the drinks. Yeah, I'm not like <laughs> these people are like, Can I get a stoli and orange? I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and thankfully, there was a really nice bartender there. I'm like, Dude, what is a stoli? He's like, I got it, just, just write it down. I'll, I'll hook it up for you. So I was like, All right. I was like, can't these people just drink beer? Like, yeah, <laughs> like they do in Lancaster. Yeah, you know, like, I was like, just get beer. like, we don't know what this is. Yeah, like all these cocktail mixes. I was like, whatever. So, and then I would go to the record label, which was a couple blocks from Zanzibar, and I'd work there until three, four in the morning. Oh my gosh. And so I was like, okay. And then I go home and start right back over, and that was like two years. That was your life. That's crazy. <sighs> yeah. So I worked um, at the record label for a few months, interning and interning. You don't get paid. Right. I was like, I hate these people. I hate everybody. Like, I really, I was like, I hate people. 
And uh, so three months in, uh, little Kim walks in. At this point, like, I don't give a shit. What celebrities coming in here? Yeah. I'm going to kill all of you. Yeah, you're at your wit's end. <laughs> yeah, making me get cookies from like 20 miles away, like for nothing. Like, I'm just like annoyed. So she comes in like, hey, like, and I don't know what I said, but she couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> and I was probably being like factual, like, this sucks, and she thought it was funny. So she's like, she's really funny. So two days later, her manager came up to me and she's like, hey, she really likes you. She's kind of saying, like, she doesn't really like many people. She wants to be your assistant, you want to do it. And I was like, okay. Wow. Yeah. Just so, like that. So I was Lil' Kim's personal assistant for two years. Gosh, and what was that like? Like, what was that experience like? So I look at, like, myself and these stages in my life. Yeah. I don't know if you relate. You're young, I do, you're yeah. young still, but, like, it almost feels like I'm talking about, like, a character. Like, yeah. it's not me anymore. It's, like, the evolution. I'm, I'm a different person than what I was. Totally. Yeah. So that young girl, she was 23, 24. Yeah. And honestly, I was just, I almost like felt surreal. I really didn't get to enjoy it. Like if mm -hmm. I would enjoy it now. Yeah. Because now I'm mature, I'm wise. Yeah. It was definitely like a welcome to America. My whole life's been a welcome to America. I yeah. feel like I've seen America more than most Americans. Definitely. I would agree with that from hearing your bits and pieces, you know, even just outside of the show, but... And I feel like I've always had that curiosity in me, even as a kid. Like, yeah. I really feel like we're born with it. Because I get that question a lot of, if you were in the Middle East, would you be the same person? Well, that's an interesting question. And I feel like, yeah. Um, I totally think so, yeah. I've had this curiosity, this monster in my head yeah. since I can remember as a kid. It's always like, what's that? What's that? And I've heard a lot of people say, you ask too many questions. Yeah. But I want to know. So I know. Little Kim was an experience that I couldn't even share with my mom. Like, right. How do I tell my mom? I'm like, mom is like, I'm on a tour bus from here, there's groupies, there's a non-Muslim way of living. Yes. I am hanging out with it. <laughs> right. You know. Every night. 24-7. Oh my seven. god. <laughs> like, honestly, like, I got to see the, the ways of the streets, like, hip-hop, like, I was just like, what am I, and honestly, like, I never felt unsafe. That's good, yeah. I almost felt like I was like floating through it and just watching everything happen. Wow, yeah. But I couldn't believe that life is this way. It, it was weird. But anyway, so I love the music part. I became her assistant, but that's not really what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in the studio and record. So yeah. They were taking me away from that. Right, right. So, Where's your energy going? Yeah. You're starting to like tap into yourself, yeah. realize it's not working. Yeah. And was it a challenge working for her? Like, was she demanding, you know, or no. was it different? She was so sweet. She was so That's nice. That's awesome. She was so nice to me, but like she did say some things. Uh, a couple people said that when I was in the industry, like, you're too nice, you're too nice. Mm -hmm. And she would even say, you're so nice, I feel weird being cussing around you. And I'm like, dude, I don't care, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'll cuss away, I don't care. Like, no, no, you're so sweet, I can't. So she was really sweet to me. She was, she was tough cookie, I mean, low yeah. is tough cookie, but she's really sweet. Yay, um, that's awesome to hear, though. Uh, so I'll tell you, she, uh, so she had a Bentley, um, and a Range Rover and a G-Wagon. So, this is the days before we had GPS on the phone. Right, right. Like, this is going yeah. back now. Yeah. <laughs> so, my crazy ass is always like, mm, fake it and figure it out. Don't tell people you don't know what you're doing. She's like, God, I take my G-Wagon. Oh my gosh. And it's Christmas Eve. 
go get me a Krabby Patty from Toys R Us, which everybody sold out of Krabby Patties. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I don't know what Toys R Us is. And yeah. Days we're printing out Map Quest. So I roll in. I was actually living in Jersey City, which is across from New York. So it was like the hood. Yeah. But I was friends with all the little kids. So I pull up in the G Wagon, and the kids were like, oh my God, look at the car, the car. And I was like, all right, I'll take you guys for a ride. So I get the kids in the car, we go for a little ride, and then I'm like, Jody, you need your help. And he's like, all right, let's go. And mm -hmm. Jody. So we ended up, after like three Toys R Us's, we found a Krabby Patty. And I'm like, all right, thanks, Jody, I owe you. <laughs> but now I didn't know how to get back to her house. It oh was my like God. in Alpine, New Jersey. And I'm telling you, I don't know what store took me back there, but somehow I ended up back there like three hours later. And she's like, why are you late? And I was like, oh. Yeah, I had some stuff to do. I was just freaking lost. I didn't know how to start the Bentley. Yeah. Um, Crazy. I ended up going to Miami with her. And then I remember one day, you know, we all have that little bit of us. It's like, I want to be famous. Yes. Everybody has that piece. Absolutely. Yeah, did, Everybody right? does. And I was like, oh, what do we like to be? Dude, those paparazzis came out in Miami and I had a panic attack. Yeah. And that was like a reality check. I was like, I don't want to be on TV. I yeah. don't want to be on the news. Like, I don't want to be on paper. Not that I was famous or nobody cared, but it was that. But piece. you think you want that and then you see it Ooh. playing out in real life. And it's like, do I actually want that? It's really interesting that you're bringing this up because I've yeah. been having this internal conversation yeah. too. Yeah, like how far do I want to take the, uh, I don't even know, like personality or the personal brand, you know? To, to, to be in the spotlight like that, Yeah. you need thick skin. Yeah. Like, I mean, I was like ugly duckling stage at that time, but I'm like sensitive person. Like somebody's like, look at that girl, look at her hair. I'm like, ah. Oh. Like die, yeah. Oh. Like, Frank We're Frank all Frank. highly sensitive that yeah. listen to this podcast, so we completely agree and can all relate. Yeah. And honestly, it was like a blessing because it was like, check. Like, yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. And not many people get to experience that. Let me try it for myself first. Yes, exactly. Right? So, okay, we have TikTok stars, we have bloggers, bloggers, whatever. It's not the same. No, yeah. My paparazzi is coming at you, taking pictures, little Kim's next to you. But now, mind you, like, I love her, but my culture doesn't love her. Right, like, right. I can't be next to little Kim as a Muslim. Right. My family, like, oh my God. I was like, now I'm having my anxiety. I was like, I gotta get out. Yeah. I ended up falling in love more with watching Kim get done up. So like, I became friends with the makeup artist, the hairstylist, and I was so nice to everyone. Again, you're too nice, you're too nice, you're not gonna make it, you're too nice. But if I call anybody right now, everybody would pick up the phone. Absolutely, yeah. And I was like, I don't care, I don't wanna be a bitch. Like, that's yeah. not me. Like, yeah. I get it, I get you have to be a bitch in this industry, but that's not me. It's just not who you are. No. So I stayed that way. Little Kim ended up going to jail. Oh, wow. Um, but sometimes I feel like, I don't know if you feel this way, if anybody feels this way, but sometimes I feel like life is a movie and you're the character and things happen for you. Absolutely. So I yeah. felt like, you know, not that I wanted her to go to jail, but I felt like the universe, God was like, look, I'm going to put her to jail so you can get out because I know you want to get out because you don't want to be here. Yeah. And I was such a people pleaser that I'm like, I don't want to be here. It doesn't feel right. I have to finish what I came to do or my job or... My promises. Exactly. Yes. We can all relate to that too. Yeah. Definitely. So as soon as she went to jail, I was like, I'm out. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go home. I actually started a makeup line, a mineral makeup line. Nice. And I bought the prettiest packaging. I'll tell you, so New Year's Eve is coming up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. For some weird reason, New Year's Eve is always um, a project day for me. Really? Uh huh. I love that. It's it's so weird. So that year, New Year's Eve, I was actually in the basement of my mom's house filling up 
makeup. Oh my gosh, loading your palette yeah, and, and everything. I ended up getting it into hair salons. And that's amazing. So um, that year, I realized like my parents were having financial issues. Sure, yeah. So I went from being like the kid who's like, oh, my project, I can do things, to oh my god, I gotta grow up now. Like I gotta get a job. Like, yeah. I gotta help my parents. Like, yeah, this makeup is not gonna cut it. Right. It's it might be paying our bills currently, but yeah. it can't supply you exactly. know, what we need. So, I absolutely can relate to exactly. that. Exactly. So I went from New York City, you know, of course a couple of people that knew from my college were like, gosh, she's worked for a little Kim, like how awesome. Everybody's trying to get in a little bit. Yeah, right. And you know, and uh, like people didn't understand why I left. And I didn't owe it to anyone else. Like, I don't want to talk about it. I left. So ended up seeing an ad online. It was a new startup skincare company. Cool. And it was in Jenkintown, and it was like their first day. Um, so I went to interview. I knew nothing about skincare. Oh my gosh. Like, so I went from like hair salon to well the spa not really because i worked at the spa i knew right. like, so i knew a little bit about skincare but as far as like formulation like, really, right as in depth yes yeah, like exactly. this position was right so yeah i like so at the spa i actually learned a lot because i was a spa coordinator so when i went to the spa um i actually got promoted as assistant manager within the first two months of being amazing. there so now i'm her assistant i'm an assistant like to the, the so spa cool. owner and I'm sleeping two, three hours and then Yeah. And I'm like, how do we do it? I don't, I don't know, know how you weren't a bitch because I was I was showing you earlier before we were recording for our listeners, yeah. like I have my temperamental moments and it's most of the time when I'm PMSing, I'm on my period or I haven't gotten enough sleep. So I would just have been a really Jane person like, the whole time, you know? I think I was just so used to life being that way yeah but i didn't yeah. have anything else yeah like moving here culture shock no friends be your own friend do this like it was non-stop honestly it's been non-stop till now yeah since like, you came yeah like it's really been non-stop like i haven't had i haven't enjoyed my my childhood <laughs> like, yeah yeah we um, can a lot of us can relate to that yeah. too so do i regret it no yeah i mean i can't it's not there's no point to regret it like could i party a little more well i never partied like i never my first drink was when i was 24. wow it's amazing and yeah it was a good buzz and i was like what is this <laughs> And then it all started. Yeah, I'm like, this is fun, maybe. <laughs> now I kind of get it. Why people like that? Those cronies or whatever you're saying, the beginning. I know. <laughs> Alcohol was my first buzz was actually the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. <laughs> was it really? It was because I don't drink anymore. But alcohol, I was so rigid and stiff and guarded. Yeah. And. Growing up in a Muslim culture, you're definitely brainwashed to be yeah. like, we're better people, everyone's going to hell. Yes. Don't do bad things. So I'm living my life in fear of going to hell. Yeah, oh my gosh. And that first buzz was the first release to say, chill out. Like, it's kind of fun. Yeah, let your guard down. And that was really the first moment where I really became like open-minded to everything. Wow. Like, yeah, I have to say, like, that was the best thing that happened. Of course, if you have addictive personality, right, it would suck for me because I would have been an alcoholic. But I don't. Like, I don't have that personality trait. Yeah. But it definitely opened my eyes to the world, to people, yeah. to, to now I... <laughs> I don't practice religion at all, you know, it's yeah. not something my family wants to hear. They want to hear that I'm Muslim, but I'm just a spiritual person. And, and at the end of the day, I don't know where we're going. Sure. Um, faith is good. Look, everybody has their own belief and it's fine. If it makes you a good person, go for it. Yeah, that's um, what I always think too. And 
I want to live my life as a good human. Yeah. So whatever that path is, that's, I want to do it. But um, yeah, so I ended up getting this skincare job. Right. And I was their only rep, and they hired one more guy. And then I ended up working for a skincare company for five years. Wow. And um, it was Meg 21. So okay. I'll say the name just because my clients have been with me since Meg 21. Wow. Are still with me. That's amazing. And that speaks volumes to who you are, you know. And it was, yeah, since 2006. It's amazing. Yeah, so it was the first time I really got to experience like going to trade shows. So I went to trade shows with them. They flew me all over the world. I went to Guadalajara, I went to Hong Kong. Wow. I trained 300 members in like, um, it was like a Sephora like company in Hong Kong. So I wow. got to go there. Um, so really it was a great experience. Um, and then eventually you just outgrow right. the position. I was doing everything. I was doing marketing, sales, training, and Gosh. But again, that was my personality. Like, I'm the type of person that will, I've always worked hard. Like, yeah. whether it was $5 an hour or $100 an hour, right. I gave the same effort. So, but I never saw myself as a salesperson. I just always cared about people and I cared about my customers getting what they needed yeah. and everybody becomes family and and I think that's what got me to where I am today yeah um and and I you know straight up like every position I've had I've always been the top salesperson yeah yeah and I'm if you know me or if any client knows me, I'm not type A, I'm not pushy, I'm not like close deal. No, yeah, completely opposite actually. So I never even looked at that, but other people started saying things. Like, and even my brother was like, dude, you're so good at selling, you should just go teach a class. Yeah. And, and I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you're just good. So that was something I just picked up. So I've been in the business so long, I started then, I was like, all right, well, if I'm selling skincare, I might as well sell something big. I was like, all right, so what's the next thing? I was like, lasers. Let's, let's yeah. go look for lasers because you're putting just as much effort into selling this. Right. It's going to be the same effort as selling this. Let's make some more money. Ended up working for a laser company. I met them at a trade show. A couple months in, they were like, you're great. Come to Dallas with us. Wow. And curiosity kills the cat again like I'm like let's do it let's go yeah. I'm very impulsive in my life I don't think much uh I think more now just right. because I'm older but I was like all right let's do it um these guys were awesome I sold like a bunch of machines like this is like the first time I'm getting like big checks like yeah twenty thousand dollar commission checks I'm like whoa it's amazing oh yeah I'm good at You're this. Like, I like this. this yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm comfortable with this yeah. <laughs> like, oh they moved me to Dallas they got me an apartment wow that's amazing everything was like awesome and you're able to help your family out a little bit yeah. I'm sure yeah. so it's like everything's working you really yeah. manifested mm -hmm. this you yeah. know so here it comes now like I realize that the companies like I'm pretty much holding the company with wow. my sales. Um, so then I realized that the owners weren't doing a good job with the company. Long story short, the company bankrupted in eight months. Wow. And now I'm in Dallas and they're not paying for my apartment. They're not paying for my car. Oh my gosh. And they owe me a commission check. Right. So I'm like, here we go again. Like I'm tired. I ended up going through a really dark depression probably a good year after that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, right? Like, And I didn't want to work for anybody, even though you're like in that, like I had a little bit of savings and I was like, okay, well, I don't have it in me to give 20% to anyone right now. Right, And I right. don't feel right even telling someone I'm going to help them if I'm not going to produce. Yeah. So let me just stay back, 
figure it out, live on my savings. Um, and honestly, like, I, it was like, I couldn't get out of bed. Like, I would stare at the ceiling. Like, I knew that feeling. I would do very minimal. Um, and then I'd go see my parents every two months. So I'd go two months, stay there, come back to Dallas, two months. And uh, my neighbor, she was like, why don't you just Airbnb your place? Such a good idea. And I was like, all right. And I was like, wow. Yeah. She's like, girl, just do it. It's like, whatever. We're in a high rise in Dallas. Like, you're not allowed to Airbnb, but I was like, whatever. Sure. Like, Let me put it on. Let's see if it gets listed. Like, somebody picks it up. Dude, next day, I was like, somebody booked my place. I was like, okay, all right, cool. Nice. So someone booked my place for like two months while I was at my parents. So wow. that was paying my bills to my parents. Yeah, wow. Covering that apartment. Just enough, like not. I wasn't Crazy, rich, yeah. Like, yeah. But you needed the money and you were able to do it and that's awesome and it worked out, you know. And downtown was where the convention center was, close. And so I decided to up my prices so I don't get riffraff. Right. So I don't want anybody just coming into my Airbnb and trashing it. Totally. Um, so my freaking Airbnb got booked out for a whole year. Oh my gosh. Like, crazy. where am I going to live? Yeah. Like, I was like, dude, I don't have a place now. Oh my gosh. So I ended up getting an apartment downstairs while I had an Airbnb upstairs. <laughs> Now there was a site called Royster. Oh my god. And I had a two bedroom downstairs. And I was like, whatever, let me get a roommate. I ended up getting a roommate that paid the whole bill. Wow, that's awesome. And I had an Airbnb. While I'm going through depression, like, my. Yeah, dude, like, you're still in the thick of this. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, what do I do? I'm still like, whatever. Um, and then what happened was, what was I gonna say? Oh. So, I met so many people, like, going through the depression, like, what kept me sane was the Airbnb. Wow. And I met people from all around the world. There was, like, a Swedish band that came in. So cool, I yeah. I go into their concert. So fun. Yeah, like, I had people from everywhere. And, like, I ended up, like, it was almost like hanging out with people. Yeah. Distracts you from yourself. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. So when you go into depression, you automatically want to isolate and you want to stay in bed. But I had things to do. I was like, shoot, I got to Airbnb this. I got to check in. Like, yeah. Clean yeah. up. <laughs> like the whole thing. Yeah. But it was definitely, I mean, it was still customer service, right? Absolutely. Because like, I, still, I still got like a great rating. Everybody yeah. was like coming back. And, and I still am friends with a lot of people that stayed with me. That's like, so fun. That's the cool thing. So, um, so that happened. Again, I'm in Dallas. They find out I have an Airbnb. So now I get kicked out of my building. Oh my gosh. I'm like, shit. Time to this, like, whatever. So I find another building that opens up. Because I had bookings for the whole year. I was like, I need to move these people. Yeah. So I figured out there's a new building opened up. I moved in there. Thank goodness. And then um, that's when my dad got sick. Yeah. So my dad, my mom called and she was like, hey, she's like, you need to come home. And I just saw my dad. Like, like I said, I was gone two months, two months. Right, you're like, I was just I was home. Like, I was just there. I mean, we do like routine checkups and stuff. Like, I'd take him to, which is fine. Like, diabetes, like, whatever. Like, old stuff. people stuff. Yeah. Right? But not, not to the point of worrying. Like, yeah. So, my mom's like, I think you should come home. And that day, there was a snowstorm. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh, so I had to wait one more day. So, I finally get in the next day. Um, and I get to the hospital and I look at my dad and I was like, oh, it's, it's over. You just know. Like, oh, you just know. It's mm -hmm. like, he was a big, chunky guy and he was shriveled, like, oh like that fast. Um, so, in my family, like, we, we're not emotional. My parents never, like, don't cry. Your life is tough. You're a soldier. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, so he's like, oh, Dad, you look awesome, you look great. And I'm like, oh, my, my dad is going. I'm like, 
quickly. It yeah. all happened so quickly. So, um, so I ended up, I was like, Mom, let me go get you clothes from the house because my mom was staying with my husband. Right, she probably hasn't had anything to eat, you know. Yeah, so I was like, okay, I was like, I'll be right back. So I was like, I have to call my brothers. Yeah. But she hasn't told anyone. My mom does. She always has me tell everybody everything. But this, this has never happened. I right. remember, like, I couldn't even find my car. Like, I was so flustered. Oh my gosh, so terrible. And then I, my one brother was in Kuwait, one's in California, one's in Harrisburg. Wow. And and I just text my brothers, and my one in Kuwait was like, stop being so negative, we don't talk like this, be positive, nothing's wrong with him. And he's I was like, freaking out, and it's all alone, and you're like, hello. I'm like, I'm like, dude, you need to get here. Yeah. And I remember paying for his ticket to get there. Yusuf, my youngest in California, he wasn't making anything then. He had a key of it. Like now <laughs> he's like a millionaire in California, but you know, so I paid for his ticket to come over. And then again, it's like the blessing of working so hard and it's like you always feel broke, but somehow you always make it. Yes, so well said. And how like money somehow you oh, gather yes. it and you figure figure it out is just crazy to me. Like yeah. how lucky was I to even have a little bit just to do that. Yeah, to have them fly home. Like yeah. and you're in this chaotic state yourself mm -hmm. and personal and yeah. then it becomes family and it's yeah. so many layers to life. You yeah. Know? Yeah, so we were in the hospital. My dad went quick. He went like within thirty days, but Wow. Um, oh my God. Yusuf flew in, Khalid came in, family came in, Mo was still in Kuwait. Okay. And shit, he didn't make it. Like, my dad's like, he's going fast. My dad went in a coma. Oh my god. I like, like, he's not gonna be able to see Mo. But let me tell you, it was the craziest, like, I don't know what I believe in angels or like another like, dimension, but Mo walks in, my dad freaking wakes up. Wow. Like, he's just like, he's like, hey, and then goes in back in a coma. Wow. And, yeah, I'm not being emotional now because I'm trying to be tough. But yeah, it was crazy. I was like, dude, he waited for you. That's amazing. Yeah, that's so Life is so strange and odd, you know, and I'm glad that you said that because with these challenges that we face, like just how you said with the money too, and these relationships, like that's energy. Mm -hmm. You know, he could feel him, he could sense him. Yeah. And on the, sorry, now I'm getting emotional too. Okay. But on this podcast, we talked about that a lot. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not just about the exchange of money or the exchange of a conversation. It's really how you're able to impact that person with just showing up at times like that's enough you know yeah. it, it was it was crazy for me to watch that like happen and then the craziest part was we were all like treading like water with our businesses and trying yeah. to make it because you're all entrepreneurs right all, all three of you all of us and it's like my dad passed away a year later all of our businesses took off. Wow. And we always say, like, well, maybe it's his spirit that helped our business. Oh, no. The other piece I wanted to ask you is your dad also was an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So do you think that him starting his own business kind of influenced all of you to start your own businesses too? Or was it just kind of natural, like, your stories fell that way, you know? I feel like we were born to do it yeah i mean it it's the weirdest thing like we my dad had a restaurant right like i don't ever remember thinking oh i want to be a restaurant owner like my dad yeah like in the middle east you go to school like you have to get good grades like it's right that's our job like as children we gotta go to school get good grades i wasn't even allowed in the kitchen to cook wow like it was like get it done like it was never like go with your dad and learn how to do restaurant things right right no, you're gonna go to school go to college you're gonna be a doctor you're gonna be a lawyer like yeah you're gonna do status things and my dad was a self-made millionaire at age 19. 
That's amazing. And I really believe that it's just in us. Like, it's this weird thing. Yeah. But there's definitely the daddy issue in us that we, since we lost him, that we want to exceed what he did. Yes. Um, so we all definitely have daddy issues. My brothers do, I do. Um, but no, I think it's... So I have three brothers. One... Yeah. Um, and three of us are like entrepreneurial and the other one is a programmer, black and white. Yeah. Okay. You know, so it's... Um, my mom definitely doesn't have that. Um, what do you ask basically? But, um, but definitely like, I'm sure it influenced us watching him work hard. Yeah. But he did lose everything after the Gulf War. So we were in the right. Gulf War and he lost everything. So he did have a lot of money and then went to zero. So we didn't really get to experience the luxury right. that my mom experienced with my dad. Right. Um, we right. did experience the privilege of going to British schools, wow. which was really expensive in the Middle East. But as a kid, you don't know that. Like, right. You're just going to you're school going and you're school. coming home. Right. You know, so it's not like, oh, we're going to fancy parties. No, it was just, but we had computers. Yeah, wow. We all had each computer, which was expensive well, right we didn't know because right how would you guys know that you know we'd hang out with other kids with computers yeah so so but um but definitely going through the struggle financially after right has definitely you know impacted me would i rather be a rich kid hell yeah <laughs> yeah, right. I'll take it. Like, <laughs> I, you know, people are like, it made you stronger. I don't care. Yeah, it would have been, been nice. I would have been relaxed. Right. This is exhausting. Like, I get it. I'm inspiring you guys, but <laughs> I'm tired. It is a hustle. Yeah. yeah and, and like you said, you've been going your whole life at this, you know? So yeah. I think it's really relatable. And I, I know a lot of our listeners feel the same way because a lot of them, I, I work with them one-on-one -on -one too, and they say the same thing, you know? It's like, we've all been in this hustle mode for so long and you could say it was 2020. You could say it's the life yeah. experiences, right? That like knock us over the head where it's like, hello, you're still here, you're still living. Like we have to take some of this in. Um, and even like you said, step back and like give ourselves the credit for the success and what we've built so far, you know? I think so, I think, but it's also, you do have to be a little more present, if that's my advice to you. Yeah. Is to enjoy the chaos. Yeah. And what I noticed is I'm made, I'm made for chaos. Yeah. I really am. Like, as much as I say that I wish I had an easier life, of course I do, but I feel like I thrive in chaos. Yeah. It's I thrive in, in situations where it's not possible and I figure out how to make it possible. Yeah. And if the path is here, my curious cat syndrome kicks in and I'm like, but I want this path. Yeah. And I know it's going to be harder. And I know it's, um, it's going to get me in trouble probably, but I feel like I think I can do it. It's worth it. Yeah. And I think, I think when life gets too comfortable, I get bored. Interesting. Yeah. I can relate to that too. And I almost become uh, depressed. Yeah, it's like a different depression. Yeah. yeah. Depression, exhaustion and being overworked, I used to think was depression, but it's not. Yeah. It was more of like, go take a nap. Yeah. Like, we got things to do. I think, but what was missing in the overworking is the connection piece. Hmm. Yeah. So learning to make sure that you have people around you, that you feel human still. Yeah, that's so well said. <laughs> and you forget that. You, feel, you think you're like alone, you're working, you're going, and it's like, no, there's humans around you that you love. And yeah. 
and that's what makes it worth it, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, I'm like two puppies, so it's like every morning, like, I'm like, I love these girls. Yeah, like yeah. they're our lives. I can relate yeah. to that, like, we would be yeah. like snuggle in the morning, like we have our time, yeah. you know? So chatting about your puppies, can yeah. you tell us about them? And yes. I love their names. <laughs> so I actually got them in Dallas. Did you really? Wow. During my depression. Oh my during gosh. my depressed state. So um I was probably um before actually, but what happened was like I just feel like humans don't say hi to each other. Yes. I'm like, I feel like if I can get a dog, somebody will say hi to me. And I always wanted a shih tzu. My brother in Kuwait was gonna send me a shih tzu that he rescued, Gosh. but we couldn't get her over here. So she ended up being his. And he named Aww. her Addy because I'm ADD. <laughs> he named her Addy and he was gonna ship her to me, but it didn't work out. So Halloween day was like six years ago, seven years ago. And it was an ad in Craigslist and it was like selling shih tzus. And oh I was like, gosh. you know what? Screw the party, I'm gonna get me a shih tzu. So I drove, it was this Mexican lady's house. Nice. And she had four little shih tzus. And they, they, they were so small, they were not even, you're supposed to sell them at eight weeks, they were three weeks. Oh my gosh, baby. And they were, so they were three boys and a girl. Oh. And that was like me and my brothers. And I was like, I'll take them all. Oh my god. And she's like, no, I sold two, I only have two left. I was like, all right, so it's the boy and the girl. I was like, all right, just give me that too, because uh, I've never had a dog. I'm oh, like, wow. It's okay. my first animal. I was like, all right, I'll take two. And my friend was with me. She's like, you're going to take two? And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to separate them. Like They're babies. So, <laughs> yeah, so I named the boy Peanut Butter and the girl Jelly. I love their names. <laughs> and they are my favorite things. And my mom hates animals. She's a germaphobe. She hates dogs. So in the Middle East, people don't like dogs. It's like something in the culture. Yeah. Supposedly it's in the Quran. It's dirty, but there's nothing in the Quran that says that. <laughs> but um, when my dad was dying in the hospital, I actually brought jelly with me. I left peanut butter in Dallas. Aww. And I was like, oh, this is dark and heavy. Yeah. So when I went to see my dad, I went to Dallas for a day to grab some stuff and come back. Um, and I brought Jelly back with me, and I had her in a suitcase. So I came in at like nine at night, and called the nurse. So I said, I want to lie, and I was like, hey, I to walk in the bed. My mom's like, what are you saying? And I was <laughs> You're like, like, cute. So Jelly pops her head up. Oh. And my mom's like, what is that? And I was like, it's my doll. <laughs> She's like, oh my god, I love her. Yay. I, Jelly ended up staying with us in the hospital to my dad. Gosh, and we're not allowed to have dogs in the hospital and the nurse with us. Like, wow. The nurses were so nice. Like That's we amazing. had them covered and she's like, just don't let the doctor know she's in there. Yeah. Jelly was so good and quiet, like the whole time. And the doctor walks in and she's like, Rah! And I was like, dude, this whole time. <laughs> You're like, like please. I all the people to bark at yeah, that one. <laughs> like. So, and the doctor was so confused. He's like, did we just hear a dog? I'm like, don't know what that oh, is. Like that, straight up. <laughs> um, so my dad passed away. My mom was like, well, let me keep this one. You have one. And I was like, no, you got to take both. They're, they're brother and sister. So I ended up getting peanut butter, bringing them to mom's. Um, and she sleeps with them every night. Aww, and that's it's like, so great. Yeah, and she said, I never understood why people loved animals, but now I do. She gets and it. she's like, I'd rather my family die than these dogs. Yeah. And she's like, I love them, I'd die if anything happens to them. Um, so yeah, she's like, magic. And even my brother's like, dude, what'd you do to mom? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I didn't do anything. She loved it. But now she wants, like, she's like, can we get a cat? Can, oh my gosh. Can we get, like, birds? I'm like, we're not having a zoo. Lady. Yeah. You're like, the two dogs are good for now. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that's so great, though. Yeah. That's awesome. So my dad actually met Jelly. Aww. And uh, so he met Jelly, but he thought she was a rabbit. Aww. He was like, did you bring me a rabbit? <laughs> My dad kind sharp. of looks like that a little bit, my you know? Dad, yeah, my dad's super smart. My dad's so social. Mm -hmm. We'd go anywhere. Like, we'd travel. Like, 
We went to Germany once at an airport. So my dad called everybody George. Really? Like everybody's name was George. Like, George, George, come here, George. And uh, so we go and like, we found a George in an airport in Germany. Or here, or my, my dad yeah. is everybody. So he definitely had that charm, like, yeah, everybody knew who he was. And he was a hard worker, but um, something he said, like, you know, like his dying days was just like, don't deprive yourself. He's like, yeah, material things are just whatever. He's like, your health is everything. He's like, look at me. He's like, he's like, all the money in the world can't help me right now. Yeah. You know, so that was definitely something that I was glad that he had in his moments. Because yeah. Because of going from a millionaire to nothing. Yeah. That could ruin a lot of people's spirits. Definitely. And with him, he was so grateful. Yeah. Just to have health care here. So it's so great to hear your dad's perspective and, you know, how that has really helped you curate your lifestyle and how you approach life, which is so beautiful. So can you tell us about My Skin Buddy and how this kind of creation has allowed you to express that, you know, through your product too? Yeah, so my dad actually got to see My Skin Buddy. So I was working on My Skin Buddy while my dad was in the hospital, so I was on the computer. Wow. And I remember showing my dad the screen. I was like, Dad, look at the new site. Wow. I wasn't chills. there anymore. But I just remember it was it was a rough moment because it wasn't like a happy moment because it was a moment of him looking at me like, I'm done. Like yeah. I don't have it in me to even look at this now. Yeah. And I was like, ah, this is not exciting anymore for him. Like, this is, he's ready to go. Yeah. But, you know, it was definitely like, I sat on it after he died. Like, I sat on it for six months without doing anything. Wow. I had everything ready. I had brochures. I had skin buddy ready to go. And I remember just sending like a few out. And a year later, I probably sent out like, 200 skin buddies um and i didn't hear anything from anyone wow and i didn't want any more bad news yeah not and right I, now and i didn't have it in me to follow up because i was like already i had like imposter syndrome in my business um dealing with like so much trauma it's not gonna work yeah. and a year later i was at a trade show a friend of mine gave me a corner of her booth she's like come with me in exchange help me sell my product and you can have a corner. Yeah, nice. So her name is Dora. She has Matisse from Paris. So I love her line. So I was like, all right, I'll help you sell if, if I do that. So I'm in the corner and an esthetician came by. I think it was in Vegas. And she's like, oh my God, my skin buddy. I love it. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're like, wait, you know about my product? And she's like, oh my God, I love it. And it's like, uh, I love wow, it so much. Yeah. And I'm like, why didn't you say anything? She's like, I wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> and I was like, come on, I'm here trying to jump off a bridge. Yeah. People. Yeah. And you're not giving me feedback. If I didn't have it in me to follow up, I just didn't. I yeah, like, sure. And literally, like that whole year, I was planting little seeds, like as little as they were, they were growing. Oh my gosh. And a year later, um, it started growing and that year was actually the year I brought in my business partner. Oh my gosh. And I've known Lou for 10 years. Um, so he was like a mentor in the business or whatever. And we just had dinner. His dad recently died. Oh my gosh. So we connected on that part, but like two days after I met with him, he was like, hey, I went in. And I was in such a depressed state that I was like, dude, I'll give you half. Just don't let me tank my company because I knew at the state that I was in, yeah, there was no way I was holding any company up. No, I was gonna fail by myself. Yeah. So you know, I served his purpose, as you know. This year, I got rid of Lou. Yes. And I'm the sole owner. Um, and that was, you know, he served his purpose. He gave me the fake backbone I needed mentally. Yeah. Uh, I was doing it all on my own anyway. Yeah. Um, but honestly, this year what I learned was 
I never, ever, ever want to feel in a weak position to allow anyone else to control my money, yeah. my business, my life. Like, that, like, if I can help someone else not get in the position I got into, then that is going to be my why. Like, it was my business, but I felt like... I allowed him to control my money, allowed yeah. him to control direction. Yeah. Um, and it's probably uh, multiple factors of cultural respect because he was older and I'm like, oh, and he's uh, a man, he knows more than I do about money. Yeah, sure. You know, and I trusted him. Yeah. And it, you know, it, I learned a hard, expensive lesson. Yeah. Uh, it cost me a lot of money to get my business back, but. I'm ready to make a lot of money. Yeah. And I'm ready to be the toughest, you know what? Yeah. Bitch, I can be. Yeah. Because I'm tired of being sweet. I'm tired of being nice. And I will always be kind. I will always be fair. But 2023, I want my damn money. Yeah. And you deserve it. And I want to give money back. And. And then it's just, yeah, I'm so excited. I am, after all of this, like, pounding and people, like, betraying me, like, I'm more excited than ever. Good. And it's like this new rebirth, like you said. Like, it's, it's the craziest thing. And I, I tell people, I'm like, look, it's like, if I knew the universe was like, hey, listen, I'm gonna give you 10 months of the shittiest, hardest 10 months of your life. Right. People are gonna betray you, you're gonna wanna die. Yeah. But you're gonna have an amazing life after. You want it? I'll be like, give it to me. Yeah. Give it to me, I'll take it, let's go. Because it was, it's so worth it to be in this position now where I'm like, wow. Like, like it honestly, it took me a little bit to realize that the money coming in was mine. Yeah. I can relate to that too. It was like, who's taking it? Who's taking it? Like, it's, is it mine? Oh, yeah. it stayed? Like, nobody worked it out of my account today? That's right. crazy. Right. And yeah, it's like a new, and turning 42 soon, well, September, but I feel so peaceful at this age. Yay! And, and you know, I got married too, so that added to the whole, like, Situation. This year was crazy. Like, yeah, you've been through the ringer. Yeah, I, you know, I got married, and then, but then I divorced him, and I divorced my business partner. Yeah. And look, I, I do things quick. Like, yeah. I, I don't play around, but whatever. Get toxic people out of your life. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, I fell into the society's trap. Of sure. I never thought I would. I really never thought I would. But I was in such a weak moment. Yeah. From every angle, getting betrayed and people telling me like, you should do this, this. That I felt like I didn't trust myself anymore. I was like, yeah. Who am I to trust myself? I'm already like, right. Getting robbed and getting this and here, like whatever. My mom's like, you're getting old. To get married and have kids. What are you doing? And then he's telling me the same thing. And, you know, yeah manipulating my weakness and it's like all right and i knew i was making a mistake when i was doing it i know everybody knows everybody knows they're making a mistake when they're the wrong person yeah and everyone will tell you that that i've talked to but it was a quick three months yeah and honestly it was the best lesson because i was yeah. like you know what that's not freaking me right and if society wants to judge me for not following the steps that I should take to get married and have a kid with the wrong person. I don't care. Yeah. I really don't care. I'm so glad. I could die know. tomorrow and I'd rather be here with you right now than yeah. over there miserable. Yeah, living a life get, that you, yeah. you didn't want. And I'll tell you, if I die tomorrow, God forbid, universe forbid, like there's nothing on my bucket list. Yeah, you've done it all. I've traveled, uh, there's nothing in me that I regret that like, oh, I feel bad I did that, or sure. there's no, there's no one to like, that I've done wrong, like, I'm, I'm okay going to sleep. 
Yeah. And you know, like a lot of business owners can't say that, you know, so I think it's amazing that you built what you have in the time that you have and you've overcome time and time again these challenges because that's what I see too in this industry. It's really hard to be real and also share your story, share what you're going through. Like that's why when you created that video and posted it online just for our listeners, that was really how Gata and I reconnected. I just knew that you were in this place where you were like ready to just be like, hey, this is me. Yeah. Like I've been through all this shit. This is my life and that's okay. I'm persevering and we're going to be fine. Yeah. But your message was so beautiful and so mm-hmm. raw and so real that yes. a lot of people don't have the courage to share that as well. Like when they're going through these challenges. It's tough because you know, people are like, don't show your weakness. You know, there's so many sides. So yeah. It's like, don't show your weakness. Show you're strong. Like that's how you fight wars. Yeah. But then it's like, but dude, like we're all doing the same thing and putting on this front that we're strong. Like, dude, life is not easy. Like no. it's long. And like like I wish I had a me at your age. Yeah. And I didn't. Yeah. And I feel like if I can provide that shortcut to yeah. someone younger as a female, like like whatever, I'm complete. But to feel like like, you don't feel it now, but, like, when you get 40, you're like, oh, damn, like, my clock's really ticking. Like, yeah. Do yeah. I need, oh, my God, like, what if I don't have kids? So, of course, the marriage situation was like, okay, this is my chance to have a kid. Like, yeah. if I need to go somewhere else, I have to meet somebody, date them for two years. Maybe maybe try to have a kid. Maybe my eggs won't work then. Like, sure. all these things go through Real my life. life. Yeah. And I fell in that, and I was like... And honestly, I'm so at peace with if I don't have a kid. Yeah. And I believe everything happens for a reason. And I feel like maybe I'm meant to help a hundred kids. Yeah. Exactly. Not, not one baby. I love that. And if I'm that person in the world, like, are you really going to judge me for that? No. I don't care. Right? I don't want to talk to you. Like, get out of my face. Judge yes. me in your house. Don't come near me. I love that. Straight up. Like, yeah. Don't call me. Judge me all you want. I don't care. Like, yeah. Like, and I just feel like if you're, if you have time to talk about me, you're not busy enough. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and we don't want to be around those like, people yeah, anyway. Like, you get know? your ass to work. And like, you know, I'll tell you, like, people are like, oh my God, you went through so much this year. Like... Yeah, why are you, you know, need to sit and process? No. No. I'm good. But yeah. Like, and honestly, I didn't announce my divorce or even my announcement video. I took down right away. Yeah. And that's because I don't want to milk it. Like, no, people that saw it were meant to see it. Exactly. You know? Yeah, like I don't want people like, what's oh, a big party in here so she can get more sales? Like, no. I felt like I'm wrong posting it, honestly. Like, I was like, dude, I don't want people thinking I'm trying to get sales. Like, that's not who I am. Um, but I just felt like, whatever. Like, I want to announce it because I'm good. And yeah. I don't want you to feel like, oh my God, I wasn't there for you as a friend. Can I help? Like, no, I'm sure. good. Just keep it moving. And honestly, I. I swear to you, I don't even think about these people anymore unless I talk about them. Yes, exactly. I am so busy trying to like plant new seeds and I'm so excited to like find love and like, yeah. like I'm not jaded at all. Like I'm like, I'm so excited to meet that person. And you know it's still out there. Yeah. I think a lot of people like project when mm-hmm. we're going through, when we see people going through something yeah. or when we're going through something, it's like, you need to step back. And it's like, that's not my style. Yeah. Like, sometimes I'm full speed ahead. Sometimes I'm in that moment where maybe I am just lying in bed, like looking yeah. at the ceilings. Like how you said, life comes in these chunks and stages and yeah. you know now yeah. who you are. Mm-hmm. You don't need to sit and process it. You know, you yeah. know what's around the corner for you. It's really exciting. And, you know, it's just being self-aware of what makes you happy. Yeah. And and this happiness thing is so, like, overrated. Yeah. Like, (laughs) what makes you peaceful? Yeah. Like, I don't care about, like, I don't want to, like, I don't have adrenaline in me, dude. I don't want a bunch of junk filled joy. No. 
like, I'm good. I want to sit, relax. Like, just having a cup of coffee with you is yeah. joy to me, just because it's a connection. And you don't need to be at a party. Like, for yeah. you to be like, hey, we're going out at like 2 a.m., we got to dress up. Oh, that's horrible to me. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> oh, unless I have a glam team coming over right. and dress me. Like, yeah, like I'd rather walk down the street, find a cute boutique, or you know, like, but yeah. again, happiness is relative to everybody, so you have to do what makes you happy and not follow what other people are posting as happy, yes, exactly. Because you're now you're questioning yourself, which I have. I'm like, should I be wanting to go to those parties? Like, should I, I be wanting to dress up all the time? No, I like my jammies, too. yes. I like my comfy clothes. I love being comfy. And yeah. Honestly, I want to meet a person that loves me being comfy. Yes. I mean, I'm showered, dude. Like, I, I look presentable. <laughs> I'm saying, like, well, I was, like, stinky and stuff. I get it. He has a right. But. Yes. Totally. But, yeah, like, you know, and that's something in a partner, too. You want to align with your partner. Yes. You want to align with people in your life. Your friends, your partner. Like, not just your partner. Right. Everybody around you. Yeah. And it's just. And allow people to be themselves. Yes. Everybody's trying to make you into what. They want you to be the character in their story. Totally. It's like, I don't want to be in your story, though. Yeah, I just want to be my own. It's like, I don't want to be in the, in the story. Yeah. And, and that's what I learned throughout the years. Like, people want you in their storybook. Yeah. But you have to act like the character that they want you as. Yes. It's like, no. Just not you. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're fitting into that alternative lifestyle that isn't even our lifestyle and mm -hmm. that's what the end in mind is all about yeah. too you know living the authentic lifestyle so mm -hmm. thank you so much for being here uh -huh. and can you tell our clients or our listeners excuse me how they can find us on instagram and yeah. um where they can even purchase the my skin buddy a lot of them are also into skincare so you can just go to my skin buddy on instagram um, but really, uh, for you, I'm proud of you for being 26, and yeah, like, you're, you know, when I'm gonna have a I know, now I'm, like, getting really teary. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it was, I honestly say, like, I wish I had a me in my life. Yeah. You know? And I love seeing that you're your age. And you are supported well. Thank you. You know, there's no like resentment of like, ah, oh, she's got it easy. And you do have it easier. Oh yeah. Than I did. Oh yeah, definitely. But I also it's it's more of like a ah, oh, I'm glad she's not oh, being tortured. You. Yeah. you know, it's like she's surrounded herself, you're wise, like you act older than you are, which is which is a blessing, you yeah. know? And some people your age might be like, oh, she's acting like she's 50. Uh huh. You know, which <laughs> yeah. is fine. Yeah. Dude, all I can say is me acting older when I was younger is what got me here. Yeah. Yeah. So well said. But I'm also more empathetic and, and do nice people finish first? Who knows about karma? Like, who, nobody will know. Yeah. All you can do is can you live with yourself? while you're living. Yeah. At the end, it doesn't matter. Like, nobody knows. Yeah, no one even pays attention. And, you know, because some days I'm like, dude, I just want to be a like, freaking scam artist. If these people are making it to the top. But then I'm like, that's not me. I'm like, right. But we're all different characters. We're all meant to bring something different to the world. Absolutely, yeah. Because I'm not that smart and techy. So if the world was like me, we wouldn't even have toilets. Right. So, <laughs> like, I have to appreciate every character. Yeah. Except murderers, of course. Like, right. There's have, certain we, ethical. We have to, like, really <laughs> handle. We gotta get those people together and handle that. Right. Um, you know what I mean. Totally. So, a yeah. moral situation. Yeah, I love that. And thank you so much for saying that. And I'm so grateful uh, for you and, like, creating this space for us to 
have this conversation and like holding the space for you to also share openly you know in a conversation type of way like I know you've shared this in, on other platforms but this feels so different you know okay. so thank you so much you're welcome so yeah I guess the the whole summary is to become an entrepreneur yeah it takes a lot of work yeah it really and does yeah we didn't get to my skin buddy but you guys are just seeing the final product yeah of what went behind it but there's more to come oh yeah and i'm so excited things are already in the works so if you guys are not connected with god on our socials we'll also have our social page of her personal page linked below the website my skin buddy page there's so much information that you guys can find on there um, and definitely reach out to either she or I if you have further questions or really are struggling with something, you know, we may be able to offer support or at least connect you with the right people that can. So yeah, I'm going to say one more thing Please do. about depression. So I had a doctor friend in Dallas and when you go through a dark time, the easiest thing to say is I need to numb it. I need to yeah. cope. I need to numb it. I need to take a pill, whatever it is. Just shut these emotions off. I hate it. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. And I had a really close friend of mine and he, he was like borderline Asperger's. So if you know anybody with Asperger's, they're like no filter, like straight up. Do you love this. that? Yeah. And I do <laughs> love that. Yeah. I, I want to know the truth. Me too. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm depressed. He's a doctor. Help me out. And he's like... You need a hug. No. And, but it was so like, what's that even? <laughs> that, that's like insulting, dude. Yeah. Like, that's not what I want to hear. Like, yeah. And he's like, all right, I gotta go. And he had a date. And then I was like, I was almost angry and mad, but it was the truth. Like, I needed affection. Yeah. And I needed people. And so, if you're feeling depressed and down, it's probably because you're isolating yourself. Yeah. You don't have the right people around. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing too. So in the Middle East, families forced you to hang out with other kids. Yeah. And that's something that lacks here is that, uh, like how do I start a, a club yeah. with a bunch of kids that don't have friends that we can force them to have friends? And that is the issue with, with kids like you know with adults same thing like it's like like damn like i guess i feel like let's all find that person and find a friend yeah like, i can't do it all for everybody but if one person can find one person absolutely and it's all about connection somehow it's, oh, yeah. it's like that breaks my heart yeah, I feel so bad for the kids and the entrepreneurs. Like, yeah. as solo entrepreneurs, it's really hard. Like, even when you and I were yeah. chatting, or if you work from home currently, like, you're yeah. very isolated. Like, my boyfriend and I talk about this all the time. It's yeah. challenging, you know, to pull yourself out yeah. of that pattern. So, yeah, find your people. Like, God is yeah. one of my people. You yeah. know, like, we are there for each other. We support one another. We're here today, like, doing things mm -hmm. together. And I think and, even just having a work day can help, you know? And, you know, and stars aligning again, like, how is it that you're so close to me now? I know. Like, we are so literally like an hour away from each other. Yeah. You know, when I have people in the industry that are cross country, like, I can't get to them. Like, the Zoom doesn't do it. No. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, so I'll use you if you use me. Yes, <laughs> please do. Yeah, we have those <laughs> days where I'm like, exactly. I need somebody right now. Oh yeah, please call me. Like my yeah. phone number is always open to you and to anyone else. Like I find that that's the most valuable piece that we can offer here on this planet. You know. Yeah. So you know, find that person that needs a friend. Yeah. Even if it's once a month. Like, yeah. Just a little shift in our life can make them do amazing things that yeah. they didn't think and and also like tell people like how awesome they are yeah coming back to that story about the my skin buddy and the 200 that you sent out and she says to you i love this yeah. like if you feel that emotion act on it tell it's that so person true. you know she could have totally i mean she did impact your life anyhow mm -hmm. but if she would have maybe told you a few weeks earlier who would have known what could have happened so right so you feel that, say it. Yeah, and I guess I 
say it a lot. Yeah, you do. My business. You're very verbal. And that's because I know how much it helps me that I'm like, yeah. I don't want this person to go without knowing how she's not a rock star, you know? Like, yeah. Like, she's amazing, like, and they're, because you get so closed off in your business and you don't realize what you're doing. And, you don't, yeah. And you're like, oh, and honestly, in the world of all this social media and Elon Musk's and people in Bugatti's, yeah. you feel like, am I even doing anything? Like, I'm even doing nothing. Right. Yeah, when someone's like, dude, you're killing it today. And you're like, really? Yeah. So it's almost like reality and perspective that we need versus seeing fake posts that we do ourselves. Yeah. 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 We're going to go eat. Yeah, we're going to go eat lunch. We'll be back yeah. for with you guys probably, honestly, every two months. We may be producing yeah. a show together. So we will just be on all the platforms. <laughs> just connect with us. Um, but love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And we will see you soon. Thank you so much for listening to The End in Mind. I would like to remind you all, if you haven't yet reached out to me on Instagram, we are at Meraki underscore media underscore management. It will be in our show notes as well. If you would like to reach out to me, we always offer free coaching through Instagram based around our Instagram training and our business Instagram practices. If you need any type of support, please do not hesitate to reach out to me there. And we also offer Def- several different types of consulting and training packages if you're looking for a little bit more in-depth tips. So thank you all for listening in. And of course, I want you all to keep the end in mind as you continue with your day and or work week. Have a great week and I will see you all next time.